In 2023, Taiwan was included in the world's best hospitals ranking for the first time. Out of 2,300 hospitals, 35 hospitals from Taiwan were included in the list. For the eighth year in a row, Taiwan has outperformed regional competitors like South Korea and Japan to secure the top position in the 2023 Healthcare Index by Numbio. Today, we welcome Zheng Wei, Zhenxing General Hospital Superintendent and Cardiology Expert, who performed Taiwan's first successful heart transplant surgery in 1988 and Asia's first artificial heart transplant surgery, as well as Yan Zhengsheng, Professor of Political Science at National Zhengzhou University. Taiwan-U.S. relations expert, and more importantly, he was a heart transplant beneficiary. Dr. Wei and Professor Yan, welcome to the show. Um, my first question will be directed to Director Wei. Throughout your career, you have performed over 570 heart transplant surgeries. So what do you believe has made Taiwan's heart transplant surgery the best in Asia? Okay, uh, it should be back to about the time of 1982 when I came back from Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. Um, because at that time, you know, the, the, um, the heart transplantation is quite, it's, it's just, you know, that's just beginning to do that, you know, uh, because in the, in the past, the successful rate was, was low. Mm -hmm. When I came back from the United States to Tri-Service General Hospital, we started some uh, experiments uh, on, the, on the peak, and uh, uh, we did a successful peak heart transplantation first. Then uh, uh, we uh, were lucky that, you know, in the year of 1987, uh, the legislation again passed the law of so-called the, the, the brain-based organ donation mm -hmm. law. So uh, since since that time, we 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 could do that transplantation since that time. So uh, we are very grateful for that, and uh, it's about the timing. The timing is just uh, just okay for us to begin. Um, I did the first, you know, the the fifth heart transplantation in Taiwan, and that was successful. So since then, you know, um, so many other hospitals uh, start start to do this program. Um, when we uh, succeeded the uh, operations, and then we would like to share our experience with uh, many other hospitals. So uh, now, uh, uh, more than 13 hospitals was allowed to do the heart transplantation. Mm. So, so it's, um, it, I think that the, uh, the timing is quite good for us. And uh, also the, the law legislation, mm -hmm. uh, it, we are in early years, you know, we are the, the first one probably in the Southeast Asia to uh, allow to do the heart transplantation. It's much earlier than Japan and many mm -hmm. other countries. So we are lucky. So we started earlier. So mm -hmm. this is the reason why we have a very good heart, transma heart transplantation program in Taiwan. But definitely, I think it's a big challenge moving from the animal test to performing the heart transplant surgeries on human. Mm -hmm. So talking about this kind of heart surgery, yes. I have to direct my question to Professor Yan. Mm -hmm. You are also one of Dr. Wei's heart transplant patients. Could you please share with us what kind of impact it had on your life after the transplant? Okay, first of all, I'm number 534 oh. on Zhenxing <laughs> Hospital. <laughs> uh, people I said it's almost like uh, you know the, a number that I will always remember, right? 534. <laughs> Yeah, so that's very important. But my life is truly different because uh, before that, uh, I was uh, I got a kind of like a heart failure problem because of this. Uh, uh, we will call cardiomyopathy means mm -hmm. uh, some parts of my heart's uh, muscle died. Mm -hmm. So that caused me to have uh, shorter breath, uh, also coughing a lot and then just not enough energy, not mm -hmm. good appetite, but this is not bad enough. I also have this, we, uh, we call this uh, ejection fraction rate, mm -hmm. that it was lower than normal. Usually people have 50 to 60. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to uh, about 30, so which wow. 30 to 40, it was wow. a low, mm -hmm. but it was not low enough to have heart transplant. I think heart transplant probably it's below 20 than mm -hmm. you will have, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of like, lingering for a while. Mm -hmm. And my, originally I, w I visited a cardiologist, Nick, the in mm -hmm. internal mm -hmm. one. So uh, he said he helped me to maintain the level of uh, ejection uh, fraction for a while, but he said, you got to go to <laughs> Zhenxing uh, and enroll on the you know organ donors program. Mm -hmm. So I enlist on 
I think enrolled in 2019, mm -hmm. but I continue to do okay. Mm -hmm. You know, just uh, slow, but it was okay. So my priority was always in the hundred, like mm -hmm. 100 to 200, because if people have more serious condition than mine, they, they will you know, right. jump ahead of me. And this is an open data bank that right. every hospital, uh, Dr. Wei mm -hmm. mentioned that mm -hmm. you, we have about 13 hospitals right now can do it. So it is something you put it on and then people look at the condition. So it's a fair thing. Right, so right. I'm on the waiting list for quite a while. How did uh, you feel when you're on the waiting list? Did you feel anxious or? No, at that time, I mm -hmm. didn't feel that bad. I thought, you know, I had okay life. I'm, you know, I'm okay. And uh, continue to work uh, mm -hmm. just slow, a little bit slow. Right but never expect that until 2020 at the end of the year. So that's uh, uh, almost two years after mm -hmm. I uh, enrolled in the program. I suddenly, you know, deteriorate in a way that just I fainted, mm -hmm. you know, passed out a uh, few times. Mm -hmm. First time it was on a Friday evening and now I woke up immediately. I thought, well, okay, I'll see the doctor next week, right? Mm -hmm. Because Saturday, Sunday. You didn't find it was very serious. No, no, I didn't. Well, and out. then on Sunday, I even went to our church to <laughs> preach that morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I, when I returned home in the evening, I found it again. I woke up again, so no problem. Next morning, I went to the, the local hospital mm -hmm. closer to me. And they, they said, well, you know, you probably have to go back to visit Dr. Wei yes. because our schedule is once a week. Mm -hmm. uh, one, uh, it's only once a week, only on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I, I can only visit him on Wednesday. So I said, well, I wait on Wednesday. But that evening I found it again. And then mm -hmm. uh, the ambulance just sent me directly to Zhenxing. And within Zhenxing, I found it even more time, wow. pass out three or four times. Mm -hmm. So, so emergent that I have to, you know, in IA. BP was putting me right. an intra erotic uh, yeah, yeah. balloon uh, oh, yeah, pump, yeah. right? I, I can never remember. I just remember <laughs> IABP right. Iowa British Petroleum. Okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's how I remember. But once that pump is in there, it just put push my priority mm -hmm. uh, very f to the front, which means that. Uh, yes, uh, I'm still waiting. There are still dozens of people ahead of me, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm no, nobody can surpass me, like right. jump in front mm -hmm. of me. So mm -hmm. uh, I asked the doctor, the doctor said probably, you know, at least about two to three months waiting. Mm -hmm. But having that pump is not very comfortable, comfortable because mm -hmm. you have to lie down in a position right. that you cannot eat, uh, mm -hmm. basically being fed. And so the, the, the hospital is really nice and they found me a uh, kind of like a, the, 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 uh, we, uh, we will call a kind of a, a new type of uh, intelligent uh, mattress mm -hmm. that can adjust. Means when you lie down, the weight will mm -hmm. continue to support you, just move mm -hmm. uh, with, with right. the mattress. So I thought, wow, this is going to be a long time fighting, right? right? Uh, right. The, the, the hospital even know this is not going to be, you know, a, a short term thing. Right. So I wait, uh, but that's, I put uh, the pump on Monday morning, mm -hmm. but on Friday morning, I was notified there is a heart. Wow. So only four days of suffering. Only four days. Oh, four wow. days of suffering. It's a miracle. Uh, yeah, a miracle. And then the next day, you know, the performance. So I just, you know, felt that uh, just, uh, unbelievable mm -hmm. and grateful because I think you know God has gave me this opportunity and also sent me to the best hospital you know the uh, the, the the leading expert on heart surgery with the care of the best doctor yeah. right yes <laughs> yes so I kind of got a new life yeah. that way thank mm -hmm. you so much professor yin for sharing so uh -huh. now I would like to direct my question to director wei uh, professor yin just talked about his situation could you please tell us a bit more about what's happening with um, professor yin's heart uh, well uh, his uh, heart is so called as a dilated cardiomyopathy mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that means the uh, uh, the power you know the contractility the contraction power mm -hmm. become mm -hmm. very low right so the you know, uh, the the blood in the heart couldn't be, mm -hmm. you know, pumped out to the whole body. It's right. inadequate. So, he, you know, he was in shock status. So right. he was put on IABP intra aortic yes. balloon pump to assist the uh, circulation. Mm -hmm. uh, he was lucky that you know, uh, well, several days after IABP, then uh, he got a chance to. Uh, to receive heart transplantation, mm -hmm. but the donor wasn't very good. You mm -hmm. know, uh, the 
actually he's uh, he's not in the first priority mm -hmm. actually he is uh, ranked at the uh, 17 okay mm -hmm. so there are 16 other recipients mm -hmm. are waiting right uh, before before him. professor Yen. but the uh, because of the the donor heart wasn't good mm -hmm. uh, actually the donor heart is uh, you know uh, functions not uh, not very good, and uh, the patient was put on ECMO. Mm -hmm. So that means the, um, the, the, the heart wasn't very good. Um, so other hospitals just, you know, uh, give up to, mm -hmm. to receive that heart. Mm -hmm. But I believe that I, because I examined that uh, all the data of the heart in the ECHO study of the heart, I, I think that heart still could be, could mm -hmm. be used. I, I believe the heart should be okay. So uh, I... Uh, I said to my colleague that, well, we can take that heart. Mm -hmm. So this is why Dr. Uh, Yen uh, received the heart transplantation, but the, uh, the process, the uh, procedure is quite successful. Mm -hmm. And now you see the heart <laughs> works very well. Wonderful. In this body. Yeah. 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 So even yeah. though the heart is not in perfect condition, but you said even with the suboptimal option, you can still make it work. Well, I believe that the heart wasn't very good at that time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, it will recover. Yes. Yeah, because uh, that patient was in shock status first, mm -hmm. and um, uh, the patient had a so-called intracranial hemorrhage, mm -hmm. so that interferes with the heart function. Right. So I believe that the heart, if the heart is in the Professor Yen's body, mm -hmm. the heart will become better. Yes. It will be yes. recovered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So. Professor Yen just mentioned about you passed out a few times mm -hmm. and you felt the discomfort, but you didn't really pay attention to the signs and symptoms. So director Wei, a lot of people are actually having the signs and symptoms, but maybe they're not so aware of them. Could you tell us about what are the major signs and symptoms for um, heart attacks? Well, it depends on what kind of heart disease. Uh, uh, Professor Yen's heart is so-called uh, heart failure, so mm -hmm. that means that the the most common symptom of that is the shortness of breath, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially when you climb the stairs or mm -hmm. to climb the mountains. That uh, you will feel shortness of breath, right? That's what we call the we call it exertional dyspnea. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that that's different from heart attack. Mm -hmm. uh, people say you know like to use heart attack to mention about you know the coronary heart disease. Mm -hmm. That means uh, myocardial infarction. Mm -hmm. So his disease is. Different. Ah, it's okay. not a myocardial mm -hmm. fashion. Mm -hmm. So, shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. okay. Short of breath. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Professor Yen, you just mentioned about some people may be on the waiting list for a long period of time, and people are trying to have mm -hmm. more hope. Do you? Um, re what kind of support did you receive from Taiwan's medical team, and how did you stay hopeful? Okay, first of all, well, I'm really grateful for uh, you know uh, my doctor. That first one saying, you know, here you you, you know we have done what we had tried the best that you probably have to enroll uh, mm -hmm. on the donor list so I was sent to that uh, to Zhengxing for, th for this purpose it, but maintained for two years uh, but then uh, at Zhengxing you know when be even before I started to have examination for the you know to receive the I, I have problem uh, mm -hmm. so I was treated in Zhengxing for I think three weeks right before uh, this was the end of two, 2000 18 and early 2019 2019 so I stayed in the hospital for a while but somehow somehow you know I recover so I thought yeah okay if I rest enough that might be gradually okay mm -hmm. so that was my first impression mm -hmm. uh, in Zhengxing that how you know doctors treat me and care mm -hmm. about my, my condition so I feel really comfortable mm -hmm. really good mm -hmm. at that place uh, and gradually you know, the, the, I continue to work, and then the heart, I, I mentioned in 2020, because I think it's because of my expertise on, on American politics that really make me too busy at that time. Because I, the I don't election know, season, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, you remember the election season, right? right? But the election is not over. Mm -hmm. Continue to drag on. Yes. So I was busy right. like, trying to explain what's happening, right. right? So that probably was mm -hmm. the, the reason uh, uh, I, I finally, uh, you know, pass out several times. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Wei mentioned about shorter breaths. That's mm -hmm. one of the symptoms mm -hmm. I really have problem. Right. Even walking, not climbing, you know, stairs. I look at the second floor, I said, I can make it. I look at, you know, places like four stories. So I, mm -hmm. No, no, I'm not going up there. Mm -hmm. Th three stories, I, I, I would try. But you have a fear of any kind of stairs. 
because mm -hmm. you know it, it's it's very demanding for right, you. Right. Uh, even I walk on you know just uh, regular places, uh, walking for ten minutes, you're going to feel short of breath. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a the big problem. And then coughing, coughing just cannot mm -hmm. stop. And I was notified, Doctor Wei mentioned, when your heart is not powerful enough, mm -hmm. cannot pump the blood, but right. also cannot pump the water. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I, my body was filled with water, excess of water that mm -hmm. caused me to cough. cough. So that's uh, the, type, the kind of condition. Mm -hmm. So I feel that anyone who have short of breath, who have you know uh, a lot of water in his right. body, coughing a lot, mm -hmm. uh, that's you know basically your heart is not doing it its job. Right. As a better strong, go to the hospital yeah, and have that. a health yeah, checkup. Yeah. Even though the condition is not like you're going to have you, you feel the right. pain or mm -hmm. ache. No, it's not. It's right. just it's just you just don't have enough energy. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right. So over the last three years actually everyone mm -hmm. has been greatly impacted by COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, I think all of us have got COVID, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, some people may wonder maybe there are some signs or symptoms uh, from COVID. Are there any special signs that are related um, to uh, like post COVID uh, symptoms related to the heart, Director Wei? Well, some uh, some patients, you know, have uh, the symptoms, so-called myocarditis. That mm -hmm. means the inflammation of the heart muscle. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, if a patient develops myocarditis, if the myocardi myocarditis is severe, then the patient also have a symptom of heart failure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, s um, s uh, some of them may develop, you know, so-called. Uh, cardiomyopathy mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. finally they need this heart transplantation right but most of the patient can recover mm -hmm. from the inflammation mm -hmm. so this is the uh, something related to COVID yes. and the heart and uh, some people may develop uh, so-called uh, arrhythmia mm -hmm. uh, arrhythmia. maybe mm -hmm. uh, the heart rate become uh, irregular or the heartbeat become uh, rapid and mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the, the most of the time the, the symptom will recover mm -hmm. after you know a period of time right Good to know that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Director Wei, you have performed over 570 um, heart transplant surgeries. Among all these cases, are there any special ones that you remember the most? Or any oh. ve very <laughs> okay. challenging ones that you can no. share with us? Oh, well, many of them. I, uh, let me, uh, you know, talk about the first case. Sure. You know. um, as I mentioned before, I, we did the heart transplantation on the pig first and mm -hmm. uh, uh, that was successful. Then uh, the first case of the human case, we when we did uh, the first human case, we um, actually, you know, uh, I'm quite confident about the surgical technique. Even I just have done on one mm -hmm. pig. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Where did you get the confidence? Well, I think it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, since uh, we have done so many heart surgeries, then that uh, I think the transplantation is not not the dip most mm -hmm. difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know the first one, uh, so we 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 count the time. You know the ischemic time, the, mm -hmm. the, the donor heart. Mm -hmm. uh, since we, when you harvest the heart from another human, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we start to count the time, the, the so-called ischemic time. And mm -hmm. um, for the, my first heart transplantation, we spend only fifty-eight minutes wow. of ischemic time. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Actually, that's that. That one is the shortest. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, we we did. I did it the the most rapid that's one. That's the first in case. The, in the f mm -hmm. even compared to the other the yeah. subsequent wow. cases. Compared to yeah. mine, it's all yeah. that wow. short. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, since uh, you know that's the first case, mm -hmm. and when we did that transplantation, we had an earthquake during the operation. <laughs> earthquake during the <laughs> surgery. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. it's in Taiwan, right? So everybody, you know, when I did that and the. It, it actually it's shaking right. a little, yeah. And uh, our colleagues, nobody mentioned about her earthquake since right. I, I know that, right. but I didn't say anything. Right. I do my job, yes, did and your nobody job else and is talking about it. Right. Every, though everybody felt, you know, right. uh, okay. And uh, that patient quite successful, mm -hmm. very good patient, and. Um, and before that, you know, the donor heart is not good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the heart contractility is the donor heart. Mm -hmm. Ejection fraction is less than 30. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, th well, I was wondering that it, if I um, have to use that heart, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I use that, it may fail. My operation may fail. Right. Okay. 
And uh, my operation is the fifth one in mm -hmm. Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the previous four cases not successful. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the problem is that um, I think that I, if I give up, mm -hmm. I don't use that heart. I will have no other chance right. after that because uh, mm -hmm. um, that's a, that's the uh, the only chance I can do. Mm -hmm. After that, uh, I I I still you know I, I think I won't get any chance to do heart transplantation. Then I make a phone mm -hmm. to my um, to Colombia, okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to talk about this case with uh, the director of the heart transplantation. Mm -hmm. That uh, is the doctor. Uh, the chief, he told me that it better not to do that mm -hmm. since uh, uh, that heart's not good and right. this is your first case. Right. You got to be f successful. Right. Okay. But you did, didn't uh, listen to him. No. <laughs> 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 and that was the right thing to yeah, do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I make another phone. I made another phone to um, a, uh, a doctor, so called Lin Chong Yuan. Mm -hmm. He was the anesthesiologist in Chicago University. He said to me that you try to to manage that donor. Most surgeons, most neurosurgeons like to use a lot of very strong inotropic agents. That mm -hmm. means that the, the drug to to increase the mm -hmm. contractility of the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also they, they like to dehydrate the patient. That means to give less fluid to the patient mm -hmm. because they are afraid of a brain ah, sweating, okay? okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Since the patient already want to donate organ, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you just to try to give more fluid to the mm -hmm. donor and to reduce the uh, amount, the dose of the inotropic agent. Mm -hmm. I did that and I manage, you know, I, I sit aside the, the patient, the donor. Mm -hmm. And I managed the drug and I gave them fruit. The next morning, when we did another heart echo, mm -hmm. echo study, mm -hmm. the contractility became 60. Wow. Mm -hmm. From 630 to 60. Right. Wow. So I, wow. I did that. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, I, I. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Dr. Lin Tong is very, very yes. uh, good. <laughs> you know, I thank him very so much. Mm -hmm. So this is why we, I dare to do the first trans transplantation. And th that one was successful. Yes. And afterwards, uh, almost every case was mm -hmm. successful. Wow. So this is uh, our beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. I, I, I joined, uh, you know, Zhenjing uh, heart transplant groups, mm -hmm. people who receive the, don mm -hmm. don uh, the donate don uh, organs. Mm -hmm. uh, and I met number two. Okay, wow. who who is still here wow. after thirty years? Uh -huh. So uh, I'm just a little kid. I'm <laughs> with, with them. <laughs> so many of them right. are, you know, have survived. And yes. uh, but then they, uh, we we exchange the information, uh, and then they look at the, the dosage I have right now. Uh, the, the you know the you know the kind of worry about rejection. I'm I, I'm using the most minimal mm -hmm. drugs mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. so I'm grateful for that. But so uh, glad look, to hear look, that. Look, you you met someone thirty years right. already, right? right? Still there, uh, right. so so it's right. encouraging. Yes. I think you know, for a lot of people, felt uh, that uh, you know uh, you have a transplant of organs, maybe you can live for another five, ten years. Who knows, right? right. Here, this young ladies continue thirty years mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So of yeah. course the patients will be forever indebted yeah. to Director Wei, but uh -huh. I think on top of that, you just mentioned that this is such a difficult task because before you, the first four cases all failed and it wasn't a perfect heart, but you decided to go ahead and mm -hmm. you made it work. So yeah. really amazing. So Director Wei, I read from the news that we all know you are a cardiology guru in Taiwan, but now even at the age of 70, you're still embracing AI technology. So what impact will AI have on medicine? Well, uh, I think that the recent advancement in AI is quite amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, like ChatGPT, yes. like uh, um, Studio DID, mm -hmm. okay. Actually, I, I, I use that, okay. It's, I think that the, um, the uh, the future development of the AI should be very, very fast. And mm -hmm. I think it will be very helpful in the field of medicine. Mm -hmm. When um, I think that the, that will help doctors very much, yeah. Yes. So uh, I think the um, we just have to keep the pace mm -hmm. of the development of uh, new technology. This is what I'm always thinking about it since uh, I think the uh, 
uh, when you are not the, not be just because of the doctor or the, the hospital mm -hmm. administrator, you still everyone mm -hmm. should should keep pace with the uh, development of the AI. Yes. And um, well, uh, this is um, I, I I think the Chinese are saying that. Uh, you yes. have to learn everything. Yes. Even Live and learn. At any and age. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I also began to learn the medical team term, uh -huh. term as well. Yes. And then, you know, I felt that it is my uh, left ventricle mm -hmm. that was, you know, not powerful, right? Mm -hmm. uh, having this uh, ejection fraction very low. Right. So I look at my, you know, you look at the data, uh, LV, I said, did I, uh, you know, Failed to buy enough LV for my <laughs> wife. That's the, reason, LV. that's the reason my <laughs> LV is not working. You know, right. so I began trying to learn this. Just like Dr. Wei said, you you have to learn. I think uh, uh, patients have to learn about their conditions as Definitely. well. So, this is a new experience for me. You know, following all this. Dip you know, medical terms, which right. I know political terms a lot, <laughs> right, but exactly. not medical terms, uh, which is a totally different story. But right now, I, I, I think I can access, at least read some in, new mm -hmm. information about mm -hmm. me and uh, about my, my condition. So I feel very confident right now yes. about my condition. I'm Good. going back to work, and uh, even though my wife felt I should retire, but my doctor, uh, uh, another doctor <laughs> said, uh, yeah, it's nice. You can be teaching. You can be with young people. That's helpful. To feel young, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And especially right now, it, when I walk, it's a, it's a great thing to go out and walk and right. continue to mm -hmm. uh, do some light activities. Yes. Uh, so that continue like a routine in my life. Yes. So uh, I almost like I miss one semester mm -hmm. of teaching mm -hmm. and that's it. I, I just went, wow. went back to you know teaching uh, again. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so let's now hear from Dr. Yeo Zhan Jack Lee, distinguished professor at Taipei Medical University. We spoke to him earlier about the global market for medical applications of AI, in which Taiwan's accumulated healthcare database and advanced AI applications in healthcare has the potential to contribute significantly to this market. The global market for medical application of AI in health and science and medicine is projected to grow tenfold from 6.9 billion US dollar in 2021 to 667 billion dollar USD in by 2027. What do you project Taiwan's share of this market would be? Taiwan do have the advantage of a continuously accumulated healthcare database from the National Health Insurance uh, Bureau. And we also have uh, medical centers, which are the larger hospitals, teaching hospitals. That has been doing quite advanced AI in yeah. healthcare uh, applications. The problem with Taiwan is that we are mostly focusing on using these applications in our own hospitals, but not really making them products and promote them internationally. So I think Taiwan is kind of like an, an uncut gene um, in, uh, in the field of AI in medicine and healthcare uh, that we can contribute quite a lot to the global market. What is the future of Taiwan's AI-assisted medicine in Asia and in Taiwan in 2023 after the pandemic? With commentary suggesting that South Korea would have an advantage over Taiwan, do you think it's due to government subsidies? What's Taiwan lacking? Korea has been very aggressive in this field. Um, even before the boom of AI technology, for example, they do have a brand name, a major international brand name in the radiology system. Uh, we typically we call it PACS or Picture Archive and Communication Systems. They do have major brand names in PACS and other imaging software. Now they're taking advantage of their imaging software management uh, system and, and add AI functionality into it. Um, and their FDA, uh, the Korean FDA, they have been also very aggressive in terms of approving those AI in imaging applications from Korea. So in terms of imaging AI, uh, medical imaging AI, uh, they do have an advantage and, and they've been very aggressive uh, in terms of doing the clinical trials uh, domestically, even, you know, importing to Taiwan and, and other Asian countries uh, as kind of a cheaper alternative to 
you know, US or, or, or Western brand AI imaging uh, systems. So I, for now, I think they have been moving very quickly. And we, we do need to play some catch up if we, if we are to be competitive in the medical imaging mm. AI field. What do you think Taiwan is lacking and what do you think Taiwan can do? I think our hospital really needs to focusing on not just doing an internal mm. research, not just doing their own software development for themselves, but also on merchandising, uh, try to commercialize what they're doing into a real uh, a product that the market can accept. For now, our most of our hospitals, they do like hundreds of AI uh, healthcare yeah. medicine project in one hospital, but but mostly they end up yeah. with, with papers, research papers, publishing journals, maybe some gets to patents, but usually that's the end of it. Very few actually get into the market as a product. Um, so I, I do think that we do we need some coordination or some more incentives from the government and also the uh, the IT industry to to actually um, coerce some of the hospitals' effort together and, and align their efforts so we can really produce a usable and marketable products internationally. Taiwan is prospecting to build new smart hospitals. Can you tell us about the current status of this development and trend? There are, there are about 21 medical centers, which is the largest uh, scale of hospitals. And they are all university teaching hospitals. These hospitals are very aggressive um, in the past five to 10 years in terms of developing AI project to help you know, every part of healthcare, including imaging and text and numbers. Um, as well as decision making in a process, in a diagnostic process and surgery mm. process. Uh, also, because of the pandemic, we, we also have AI that's used in public health, in trend predictions, uh, in mortality prediction, and, and, and uh, mm. other applications. Individually, they are all qualified, the top 200 smart hospitals in the world, individually. Um, but unfortunately, they are not working together and there's not much incentive for them to work with each other rather than compete with each other um, about the innovations in AI. So, so I think we created a lot of innovations. Our hospital has a good IT infrastructure and the government has a good healthcare IT infrastructure, but we've not, we have not focused on creating real, um, you know, key level pro uh, project or applications that can be bring to the market as a, as a real mm. mature product. How can AI and medical sciences contribute to developments in organ transplant operations? The organ transplantation requires very detailed plan about antigens um, and, and organ uh, compatibilities, um, as well as age, gender, among all other health conditions. So if you really want to do a, a organ transplant, a successful yeah. one, with this standard of precision medicine, you need a lot of data from a donor yeah. and recipients. And you need also a very good transplantation yeah. um, database. So, so you know how to prioritize and who's got the best yeah. match. Taiwan has been investing yeah. in this type of system for a while. Um, and I think it's working quite well. But uh, the recent development in AI can actually help the, uh, this, this type of transplantation matching system uh, to become more optimal. Director Wei and Professor Ye, we know that in Asian culture, we have this kind of tradition of respecting the deceased. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the family and members will opt out of the do mm -hmm. um, organ donation program. Mm -hmm. But actually, people do have the need, like Professor mm -hmm. Yen, you're the beneficiary yeah. of the organ donation. So how do we encourage more people to join the organ donation program? Director Wei. Okay. Um, we have to, uh, you know, to do a lot of uh, public education. Mm -hmm. So to tell the people what is so-called brand death and why we uh, can uh, donate an organ for the patient with uh, brand death. Mm -hmm. Usually it comes from, you know, uh, traffic accident. Mm -hmm. uh, that means that, you know, 
when you would, uh, when people, you know, had a head injury and uh, the brain function become, you know, uh, not reversible, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So we call it uh, brain dead. Yes. Then the organs, even, you know, that like heart or kidney was still okay, it's not still normal, but the uh, patient, that kind of uh, um, the patient won't live more than one week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so then um, the organs, be you know, before the heart start beating, the organs can can be used. Mm -hmm. Okay, can be uh, give to other other needed patient. Mm -hmm. Okay, then um, this is uh, one point need to uh, re educate the public. Yes. And uh, but still, it's hard to persuade. You know, uh, many. Uh, kind of uh, uh, thinking, you know, right. like um, more Chinese uh, mm -hmm. style. Like traditional. Yeah, traditional, mm -hmm. yeah. So we went to um, s several, you know, um, uh, leaders mm -hmm. of uh, different um, religions, uh, religion, yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. like uh, Buddhism, like mm -hmm. uh, Taoism mm -hmm. or Christian, uh, uh, etc. okay. Yes. Uh, S you know the leaders of these uh, um, uh, religions. the, the uh, religions. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, they like to adopt this kind of oh. idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they uh, said something for us to the public. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they also encourage the uh, peop you know the the uh, the followers to right. to donate. Mm -hmm. So this is the first uh, step. And um, um, as to the hospital personnel, actually, mm -hmm. we have to teach them how to respect the donors. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When uh, people donate the organ, your hospital work, work personnel have to, you know, to work in very, you know, polite and Definitely. everything has to be uh, very uh, touching and yeah. you have to, to know show the respect. Yeah, mm -hmm. have to know the the, uh, um, uh, the emotion of the yes. donor family. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. have to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the first. And uh, secondly, you know, um, uh, we have a, a so-called organ donation association. We mm -hmm, founded mm -hmm. that association mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, to promote this idea to uh, population. Yes. And uh, after s uh, several years, and then uh, we have so-called organ sharing and organ mm -hmm. donation mm -hmm. um, the center. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a actually a government supported mm -hmm. one. Okay. So they can do much more things. So in Taiwan, actually people. Taiwan people, you know, Taiwanese people is actually it's very um, kind-hearted. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, people uh, have, you know, a, a kind of, mm, you know, so-called great love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the the love in Taiwanese people is a, it, I think it's different from many other mm -hmm. uh, countries. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not hard to for us to promote mm -hmm. the organ donation in Taiwan. Good to hear that. Yeah, so you're I, the I recipient of the great love, yeah, right? So we, we have a me earlier, uh, the end of uh, last year, December 2022, there was a kind of like a meeting between the donors, family ah, okay. members, and you know people who receive, a mm -hmm. beneficiary of mm -hmm. the organs. Uh, we met uh, oh. in Dian Park. Oh, wow. And so uh, they like to hear some of our stories, right? And uh, if we were up there and they, they felt that they made the right decision, yes. you know, to donate their family members' mm -hmm. organ. And we felt that it is an opportunity for us uh, to show our appreciation yes. because uh, you don't need your donor. In Taiwan, you, you know, people don't know who you, uh, the donors are and uh, the, the donor family don't know which one, you know, the, their mm -hmm. family's organ went to. Right. But in a way that is in a bigger group that yes. people felt that each one of us is like a part of the family. Exactly. Yeah. So that so that was the very extension nice. of the yeah, life that was of very your nice. family and members. I, and I felt that uh, yes. I told them I said if you any time you need some you know kind of uh, promotion of right. trying to encourage people to donate, I would love to do it because I'm a beneficiary yes. and I, I I'm a, you know a walking witness or testimony of yes. this kind of uh, kindness yes. that um, you know make my life whole again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also you know I was able uh, to see my grandkids uh, oh, okay. which uh, I, I thought I would not have a chance right. especially the young one the twin yes. uh, I finally got to see them earlier oh. this year yeah 
Oh, thank you so much, Professor, for sharing. I can feel your emotions oh. because this is such a life-changing yeah. uh, thing that really happened to yeah. you. And we're still so happy that you're here with us. Mm -hmm. So talking about the organ transplant procedures, we know that Taiwan is doing very well in terms of the heart transplant. But on top of that, we're also very good in the um, transplant of other organs. So Director Wei, what is the reason behind Taiwan's success in the um, transplant surgeries? Well, um, you know, the um, doctors in Taiwan, actually, uh, uh, many of them are, you know, uh, in the top ranked uh, graduates from the high school. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, these doc many good uh, doctors, uh, that's the first uh, part and the first reason that for that. And um, uh, also, uh, we have some uh, very good uh, surgeons uh, like a uh, liver transplant surgeon mm -hmm. or kidney transplant surgeons, mm -hmm. they have their own group uh, group of their team. They have very good teams, and they have uh, a lot of also you know including heart. We 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 have so called organ uh, transplant association. Mm -hmm. We exchange our experiences uh, very often, very often. We have a lot of meeting, so the uh, uh, experience have been uh, shared with each other and. Uh, uh, such as you know the, the how how much is the dose of the drug and uh, uh, what is the early sign of the rejection and how to prevent the so-called infection the mm -hmm. uh, etc. So uh, the the um, uh, this will promote you know and uh, will help each other to promote to in, to uh, enhance their abilities to and also the outcomes of the patient uh, mm -hmm. after transplantation. Mm -hmm. So. Um, like uh, Dr. Chen Zhaolong and doc, uh, some other doctors, Zhen Longbin, they have they have very good skill in doing liver transplantation, mm -hmm. and s even more doctors that uh, some even more doctors than uh, uh, you know doing very good uh, kidney transplantations. Since the liver and the kidney transplantation can use the donors from the living related donor, mm -hmm. living okay, mm -hmm. instead of a heart, mm -hmm. so the number of the uh, kidney transplantation and liver transplantation is much uh, more than heart transplantation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So since their outcome is very good, so they were invited to the international conferences and also to other countries to to share their experience. So this is mm -hmm. why, you know, uh, Taiwan's um, organ, tra organ transplantation is, uh, I think it's uh, quite um, you know, famous in, at least in Asia area. Yes. Yeah. I think in Taiwan, we are really blessed with such mm -hmm. a wonderful um, national health insurance system mm -hmm. and we have all these wonderful medical professionals yeah. taking care uh, yes. of our health. But the problem is that we do see a talent shortage in many important specialties, especially like in cardiology or the so-called the difficult mm -hmm. specialties. So how, how can we address this problem or how can we improve Taiwan's medical education, Director Wei? Uh, so you mean the... Um, the, the inner field of organ transplantation, yes, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, still, you know, uh, the, uh, I, I think it's very good, as you mentioned, that the, um, uh, the health insurance mm -hmm. were, you know, uh, reimbursed the, uh, this kind yes. of uh, expenses. That's mm -hmm. that's very important mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, still, you know, uh, the, um, I, I think the, the, the health insurance is not so good as you know everybody expected you know still you mm -hmm. know we still need uh, even more resources Definitely. to help uh, these patients mm -hmm. some like um, uh, like in heart you know uh, we need some uh, uh, ventricular seat device to mm -hmm. to maintain the 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 patient the yes. recipient's mm -hmm. uh, life and mm -hmm. for the heart transplantation and uh, uh, as uh, since even we have um, uh, more you know we are more successful in organ uh, donation, but it, the number is still not adequate, especially for the mm -hmm. deceased donors. Mm -hmm. So right. this is what we still need to uh, try to increase the, the number. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So yeah. This yeah. is where I also feel very grateful because mm -hmm. uh, when, when you have heart failure yes. and you are on the waiting list, and mm -hmm. if y you you your situation, your condition is very emergent, right. uh, you, you still the heart is not there. You have to put on this we call heart mate mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. help you uh and and heart mate can i don't know how long you know but it can right. be in your body for a while mm -hmm. and but you have to recharge all the right. time but still it you know it can help you to to survive yes. but i feel lucky is because i was taught 
told by the hospital that by the doctors that if I have a heart made, my priority will be also you know very yeah. top mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I think the big question I always wonder is Dr. Wake maybe you can tell me is if I heart have a, a heart mate in mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and then in a month they notify me saying mm -hmm. a heart available yeah. mm -hmm. so I have to do the second time you can refuse you, you can refuse but, right. but, but yeah. do you want to do yeah. it on the second time you don't know so right. at least I passed that one right. so yeah. I, I feel lucky that uh, you know this uh, you know the, for the team uh, you know their experience you know they are good but also I, I feel that the best thing is about the judgment that this heart yes. can be used that's mm -hmm. the judgment final question is for director Wei as such uh, as such a um, source of inspiration for so many young medical professional do you have any words to share with them okay so well when you are a doctor you have to uh, you know you have to always you know remind yourself that you uh, your, what is the, your, um, your, uh, your purpose, okay? Your the purpose. Doctors, yeah. Mm -hmm. The doctors, when you decided to, to enter the medical school, uh, your purpose is not to make money, mm -hmm. okay? You can't make much money from being a doctor, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So your, uh, your initial, uh, is, is the purpose is to help the, the sick, pa yes. sick patient, right? Mm -hmm. And to save the patient lives. Yes. That's your uh, calling. Yeah. yeah. And also you will be uh, satisfied with your so called this kind of achievement. Yes. And so uh, this is a um, uh, you have to be uh, think like that. Uh, yes. So otherwise you will uh, you won't be happy. Right. Okay. And secondly that um, well you have to be you have to you perseverance, you know. Mm -hmm. Your perseverance is important very important because uh, if you want to be a good doctor, you must have perseverance yes uh, and also you need to have empathy to mm -hmm. the patient mm -hmm. okay you have to you, you cannot just you know uh, you you have to sometimes you ha have to keep your temper okay right. to try to treat the patient well even right. you are sometimes you are maybe your emotion is not very mm -hmm. good but mm -hmm. you still have to good to your patient because uh, when the patient when the patient comes to you that means that the patient trusts you. Yes. Yes. So you yes. have to go to the patient. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Director Wei and Professor Yen. Thank you very much for coming to our show. If you like our show, please search for us on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe to our channel. Feel free to leave us any feedback in the comment section. We look forward to hearing your thoughts.